Well, hello there. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm flexing all my beautiful plants before we get into this video of all my uh, plant fail mistakes. <laughs> Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you guys a few of my houseplant fails and mistakes I've been making during this growing season. Regardless what level or what stage you are in your houseplant journey, you're probably going to experience a few of these mistakes and you're going to try and figure out kind of how do you rectify or how do you fix some of these mistakes. So I'm going to cover about three different topics. Uh, one is repotting too early. Um, two is a common one which is overwatering and what do you do once you kind of you know experience overwatering and three is pest control and management uh, so when it comes to repotting generally speaking you want to repot like every two years especially when the roots are starting to show through the drainage holes or when they're starting to circle around and there are a lot more roots than soil usually you want to do this during like the beginning of the growing season now obviously, you know, during the beginning of this growing season, I had a lot of plants I wanted to repot and I've done it successfully with all my pothos. Uh, if you guys haven't checked that video out, I'll link it over here so that way you guys can see when it is the right time to repot. So all my neon pothos, my golden pothos, uh, the uh, pearl and jade, they're all doing well now. I moved them up from a six inch container to now an eight inch container and uh, they're thriving, right? And typically also when it comes to repotting, you only want to move it up by about a size up. So going from a four inch to a six inch or six inch container to an eight inch container. So all the pothos doing well. Now let's talk about some plants that didn't do well because I repotted them too early. One being my Raphidophora tetrasparma. If you guys recall, I made a moss pole for my Raphidophora tetrasparma. And in that video, it originally was in a six inch container and I wanted to just move it up to an eight inch container. And that was kind of the plan because obviously, you know, the roots weren't necessarily poking through the bottom of the drainage holes. They weren't necessarily, you know, circling around. But I also knew that Raphidophora tetrasparma, you know, tend to grow really fast. So I really just wanted to encourage it more growth. But what ended up happening with that video is I, the moss pole I made was really, really big and it was top heavy. And the 8 inch container that I had the Tetris Parma in wasn't going to be able to support the uh, moss pole that I made. So instead I moved it to like a 10 inch container. And as you guys can see, 10 inch container, this is huge for the Tetris Parma. The roots weren't necessarily as big and uh, what eventually happened is I had a lot more soil, even though I put a lot of perlite, a lot of pumice in here. There was just so much soil in this one big <laughs> container that I ended up overwatering the Tetris Pharma. And uh, from there, it eventually, obviously, experienced a bit of root rot. So now I'm trying to obviously uh, uh, revive this Tetris Pharma. It is in this um, you know, water right now, trying to grow some roots and whatnot. And I'll get into a bit of uh, what to do when you do end up overwatering your plants and uh, how to kind of fix it and whatnot. So that's typically what's going to happen if you repot too early. Uh, same thing happened with my uh, Syngonium. Uh, originally, I repotted them from a four inch container to a six inch container. And reason being is because Syngoniums typically grow fast, but again, the roots weren't necessarily circling around or poking through the bottom. Uh, so they still could have done probably another season of being in the same container, but I was eager, you know, I wanted these guys to grow really fast and, you know, it was uh, spending a lot of time with my plants. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, I made the mistake of repotting them too early, moving them from a four inch to the six inch container. And what eventually happened is similar to the Tetris Parma, over watering, even though you're watering normal and you're seeing that water drain through, it's because again, there's so much soil and not enough of roots for it to kind of just balance it out where it was just taking a long time to dry. Eventually started to yellow. I knew at that point, you know, if I wanted to obviously avoid the plant from dying, I had to remove it from the six inch container and move it back to a four inch container. And this is now thriving again. Now, you're probably wondering why, why is your wetland DI still in a six inch container? And the reason why I'm actually leaving this one is because originally, even though I got both of these guys at the same time, the wetland DI was actually a lot bigger than the pink splash. So the roots were a little bit more developed. And you guys can see here, it's doing pretty well. It's still growing uh, nice and strong right now. So I'm gonna keep this guy in a six inch container while I move this guy back to the four inch container and the pink splash is now showing some new growth, which I'm happy about. So the next common mistakes you're gonna make, even though you try your best, even though you have a moisture meter, is overwatering. Now, overwatering can happen and take place regardless of the size of a plant you have and the size of the pot, whether it's in a four inch 
or six or eight or ten and whatnot. Uh, you're gonna experience overwatering, <laughs> uh, partly because you know whether uh, you water too soon because the soil wasn't dry, or because maybe you know the the pot was so big there was a lot more soil. You know because you repotted a little too early, or uh, you you know forgot to use the moisture meter and whatnot. You're going to. Uh, Make the mistake of uh, overwatering. Uh, trust me, I still do it, and I sometimes got to like hold myself back. But if you do overwater, there's obviously a few ways to tell when you have done it. One is: is the pot really heavy, and is that soil so wet and like clamped really close together that it's pretty much like when you're trying to loosen it up, it's so heavy. Um, you know, is it like you know the next few days, it's still really really wet. It's not drying up like the way it normally was. Uh, those are obviously signs that you kind of uh, overwater your plant. And uh, what typically I would do when that does happen, depending how wet it is or how much overwatered it is, I'll first and always do this. I actually, always do this after uh, watering my plant. Is I'll get like a chopstick to help like aerate the the soil. So just loosening up the top soil, the top one inch, two inch layer, to just allow some air flow through. Uh, the second thing I would obviously do is because most of my plants are in plastic containers and then I put them in a decorative pot, I'll actually won't put them back in a decorative pot. I'll just like leave them in the same, you know, uh, bright area that you usually have your plants in. And again, with the soil now being loosened up because of the aeration and not being in a decorative pot, you know, you're hoping that there's a lot more air that's flowing through and will quickly dry up that soil. Now, Sometimes that will not work uh, and not the case because again, you just overwatered that, that plant and the soil is just so wet. So what you're gonna have to end up doing is actually remove a lot of that wet soil out of that pot and out of that plant, gently removing it to make sure you're not damaging the roots. And then from there, you're going to allow and let that plant sit there, uh, allow air to flow through to kind of just help dry it out. Uh, once that's done, you know, I'll usually leave it for maybe about like, you know, four to eight hours, sometimes 24 hours, depending on obviously how wet uh, and overwatered your plant was. I'll then inspect the roots to see if there's any dead roots. Dead roots are typically like black, soft, and mushy, and uh, they will just like literally like, you know, fall off or like gently pull on it and it will just detach itself from the plant. So what you want to do if you do have dead roots is just remove them, gently cut them. And depending on the root system of that plant, if there's still a lot of healthy roots, then you kind of just want to repot that guy back into fresh, you know, dry soil, uh, the same soil mixture that you normally would have for that plant, and then just get back to your regular watering schedule. Uh, so that's typically what you would do. Now, in the event that your plant has uh, pretty much no healthy roots after overwatering because they're, they've already rotted, what you then can do is put that plant, depending on the plant, in a water to try and obviously, uh, you know, propagate. You're pretty much propagating at this point where you're trying to encourage new roots from growing. And you guys can see here with the Tetris Parma, I had to put this guy into this jar with some water and try and encourage some new growth uh, to grow because a lot of the roots got damaged and rotted. So uh, that's what this guy is doing right now. And you guys can see there, there's some healthy roots showing. So once this guy develops a lot more of a healthy root system, uh, I'm then going to plant them back into a uh, soil mixture and whatnot. Uh, same thing with my uh, Monstera Peru. I, I overwatered this guy as well because I repotted too early. And again, there's a lot more soil than roots. And eventually uh, it was just like dying. And I first tried to actually remove the soil, let the roots dry out, remove a lot of the uh, rotted roots and planted this guy back into a much more airy soil medium. But it wasn't bouncing back. It wasn't bouncing back for whatever reason. And I think part of it is because the root system was just so damaged that I had to just then take it out of the soil, make sure I had it in, put it in water. And it's now kind of like, uh, perked up again. It has a bit of new growth showing and there's a new roots developing. So similar to the Tetris Pharma, I'm kind of just, you know, propagating uh, plants that I, uh, I pretty much made a mistake on by uh, repotting them too early plus over watering, right? So those are ways to obviously try and uh, uh, fix or correct uh, when it comes to overwatering your plant as well as repotting a little too early. Now, the other thing I'm experiencing this summer, this growing season, is uh, a houseplant pest. And, and you guys know, you know, if you're gonna have plants, uh, there is no avoiding houseplant pests. You're just gonna experience them. Whether they are fungus gnats, um, mealybugs, scales, aphides, thrips, uh, spider mites, you're gonna come across them. And really, the reality is, and I think this is one thing I had to actually um, teach myself or just have the mindset that uh, you, you have pests, you're gonna have pests 
uh, on your plants and you know in your home and really the way to kind of just uh, you know manage that is to be disciplined in putting a process in place when it comes to pest control and pest management so you know obviously that involves um, spraying down your plants using insecticide so in a consistent uh, way, whether it's every two weeks during the growing season or once a month during this winter season, whatever that process is. Now, it also depends obviously on the type of pest you're experiencing. You know, some are a little bit more easier to manage, like mealybugs. I find they are really uh, the easiest houseplant pest to uh, get rid of, which you, you just need like rubbing alcohol, a con swab, and you know, you dip that in rubbing alcohol and you find those mealybugs, which are those uh, cotton like uh, white fluffs that's usually. On succulents and hoyas because they love those types of plants and uh, just easily wipe them off fungus gnats obviously those little black fruit fly type of pests you know you can get those sticky traps to kind of capture them and if you have them in the soil like the larva in the soil you know wash your plant with uh, peroxide and uh, water you know just maybe mix depending on your water and kind of size of it but usually I mix maybe about like you know 10 20 percent of uh, hydrogen peroxide and the rest 80 percent water in my watering can and I just water my plant with that to try and clean out the uh, larva that's in the soil when it comes to fungus gnats as well as anything that else that's going on uh, in, with your plant so when it comes to uh, some of these like tougher pests like aphides thrips or spider mites if you already notice them on your plant and they're pretty like a lot and they're quite infested what you want to maybe do is obviously quarantine that plant especially if you only notice it on one or two plant quarantine that plant put it in the bathroom for like a few days and whatnot and you want to get yourself one of these uh, Dr. Doom uh, botanical spray and there's different varieties you know this one is for um, you know aphides spider mites white flies and thrips uh, there's one specifically just for thrips there's one specifically for uh, spider mites and really depending on on what your uh, um, you know houseplant pest issues are but this kills on the spot when you spray them so it is pretty strong and it is pretty harsh and it can damage your plant depending on the type of plant it is. So you obviously don't want to spray this to your plant that is quite juvenile still, a baby plant, or that has a lot of new leaves uh, that's just growing and unfurling. You want to wait until those leaves kind of unfurl, harden a bit before you spray your plant down with this type of stuff because this is pretty harsh. It will burn uh, those leaves, uh, especially variegated type of leaves. So obviously depending on the pest and how uh, badly your plant is infested with it, uh, you know, I still use this uh, for the thrifts with my Monstera, Thai Cosby Monstera. You know, I just had it a little bit further away as I'm spraying it down. And uh, again, it's kind of an aerosol type, so it does get into a lot of the under leaves and whatnot. So usually after I spray my plant down with this stuff, I'll wait for like, you know, an hour or two and then I'll like you know use a high pressure uh, spray pump or bottle to uh, wash the plant out and that way it at least like removes any uh, pests that's probably crawling around there just kind of just washes it out so that's what I'll typically do when it comes to like you know finding crazy aphides or thrips or spider mites that's just like way out of control now you want to just get rid of it with that um, now once you kind of do that and a way to kind of prevent a lot of this stuff from happening or coming back is you want to just include a pest control insecticide soap general you know all-purpose spray like my safers here and they, they got different kinds as well too so I use this one which is an all-purpose one uh, and you want to just you know spray down your plants every two weeks during the growing season especially in the summer it's freaking like you know the, the season of pests right so I definitely need to get into the habit of spraying down my plants every two weeks now with insecticide soap and uh, that's it you know it's just kind of a, a general uh, process to just make sure that your plants uh, are healthy and that you know whatever pests is there or, is, or starting to get there uh, is not going to get out of control and you're kind of just preventing it as well so again I'll provide a link in the description of below on uh, some of these products uh, now if you don't have insecticide soap uh, like say first what you guys can do is kind of make your own homemade one and I have made my own homemade ones a few times which actually I'm using right now if you guys were following me on Instagram I was talking about it but the ingredients I'll use for my homemade insecticide soap are uh, water obviously you'll need some rubbing alcohol uh, dish soap and then I also use some neem oil now in terms of the ratio and the mixture so here using my spray bottle here which is about one liter um, I don't know how to convert that into uh, gallons or whatnot, uh, but, but usually with this size, I'll put about 50 milliliters of neem oil 
or one tablespoon of neem oil. And then I'll put a few drops of a uh, dish soap, you know, just a few, two or three drops. And then I'll also put about another 15 to 30 milliliters or one to two tablespoons of rubbing alcohol and then fill the rest up with water, shake it really well, and then I go ahead and uh, spray down my plants with this. So, uh, so far it's doing okay and doing well. And uh, I, again, I just need to be disciplined to really spraying down my plants every two weeks, you know, uh, and I just need to make it part of the process. Obviously during the winter season, you know, when uh, houseplant pests aren't necessarily as a uh, big issue. Although I remember my Monstera first experienced uh, thrips during the winter season. So you still want to stay on top of it. And also obviously, you know, wiping down your leaves, especially when you're doing like houseplant maintenance and you're cleaning them, just get a nice wet cloth, you know, whether it's just with warm water, or maybe you can even spray a bit of your uh, homemade insecticide soap and wipe down that leaf so that way if there are anything crawling there because a lot of these pests are really really hard to see like it's almost impossible to actually see these guys so you know wiping down your leaves and again getting in the habit of doing that you know every two weeks or every three weeks depending on obviously how often you do your houseplant maintenance will help prevent a lot of these pests from getting out of control but yeah so those are some of the houseplant uh, mistakes and fails I've been experiencing you know now that obviously I'm aware of them I'm definitely going to try a little bit harder to you know just stay on top of my pest control management try and not get so excited and eager to uh, repot uh, too early for some of these plants and obviously try not overwater most of my plants so I am starting to use a moisture meter uh, which does help uh, you know hold myself back and control myself from overwatering. Uh, comment below and let me know if you guys are experiencing something similar. Are you repotting too early? Do you tend to overwater? Let me know. Other than that hopefully you guys enjoy your weekend and we'll see you guys soon. Peace.